Nick Robinson here for Polygon, and I'm joined by Aaron Greenberg, GM of Xbox Games Marketing. How's it going? I'm doing great. Uh, we're here live, as you can see, on the E3 show floor. We're going to do a live rapid-fire unboxing of the Xbox One S, the brand new, super slim, uh, 4K video compatible Xbox One hardware. So let's go ahead and uh, bust into it. Um, I've noticed a few things from looking at the, the hardware. I was at an event a few nights ago where I got to take a peek at it. And... Uh, there's a lot of small differences, uh, just from, from, like, obviously the design is an enormous difference. The controller has actually been upgraded, which I think a lot of people don't realize. Um, and, and also, additionally, I noticed, like, looking at the back of the system, even that has been streamlined a bit. So uh, we'll get into it when we, when we uh, bust it open. But it comes with the new hardware and is one new controller, is that correct? It comes with a new controller. Uh, it's 40% smaller than the original Xbox One. Uh, it does support 4K video streaming. It also has a 4K Blu-ray player built in. Uh, and then uh, for gaming, we're supporting uh, HDR, high dynamic range gaming uh, as well. Awesome. Cool. So this is the system itself. I think my favorite moment, actually, from Microsoft's press conference this year was the moment where this system is shown and then there's a wireframe of the original Xbox One around it because the difference is staggering. I think this is one of the smallest home consoles I've encountered and the Xbox One was one of the biggest. So can you talk a bit about uh, why, why you felt this change was necessary to make and, and what excites you most about this being something that consumers are getting very soon? Sure, we were thoughtful about when was the right time where there was advancements in technology that it made sense to introduce a new box. We obviously wanted to take the benefits of size, but what other things could we bring? So to be able to deliver you know, uh, 4K streaming, to be able to have a 4K Blu-ray player in. Uh, we know a lot of the new 4K TVs are also supporting HDR. A lot of people uh, are looking for that as a benefit for gaming. Uh, so there are a lot of great tech advancements there. But at the same time, you know, we're able to deliver some nice benefits to our fans based on feedback they've had. So one, we know the power brick was really big with the original Xbox One. This is it. That's the so anyone who's ever touched an Xbox One knows that the power brick is an enormous cable with a box that is <laughs> almost the size of this system. Not quite, not really, but a, a pretty decently sized power brick. Now all of that is internal. So all internal, which is amazing. So you can see they built the ventilation in right here, and we have a just a really incredible design team that took a whole new fresh look at what a console could look like at this size. Uh, it can go both vertical and horizontal. So if you wanted to stand it up. Uh, you can stand it. We do also have a uh, stand as an accessory if you want to stand to hold it. So a little, uh, some nice little touches there. This is all one big molded case, uh, and I think it's a beautiful console. Uh, you know, in, uh, in in a new color. It, it really is beautiful. Now, I, one thing I have to ask, as someone who loves vertical consoles, is uh, I think if you remember the PlayStation 2 had a vertical stand for this, their Slim, and you could rotate the PS2 logo on the front. Is there any option with the Xbox One to rotate that Xbox One logo? Uh, well, we did rotate it on the original Xbox One, but um, right now the big thing that we've done here is that we've made this so that you can actually push in the button. So a lot of people have said on the current Xbox One, when they put their finger over it, or we heard like cats will come by your cat's tail, I get a lot of stories about it, It'll, they'll accidentally turn it on or off. So what we've done is make this so that it actually will turn on and off through a push push. Gotcha. So it has changed from a capacitive face button to a, a physical button. Um, and in addition, there's, all, there's, other, there's other buttons on the front of the Xbox One that, uh, like the sync button, where has yes. that been moved? So the sync button we moved right here to the front so you can sync your controller. Uh, that was also based on fan feedback. We put an IR blaster here in the front. We know a lot of people are buying this uh, and wanting to use it for home entertainment integration with their remotes. Uh, and then, of course, just the eject button as well. So really giving it simple and clean, but giving you the functionality that you'd want, and a USB port in, right in front as well. Yeah, USB port in front is a, is a big deal. And so the IR Blaster, I think, is, is meant to, for example, when I turn on my Xbox One, I walk to my living room, I say Xbox on, it turns on, IR Blast to turn on my TV. Uh, this will allow an Xbox One S owner to do that without necessarily having a Kinect plugged in. Is that correct? That is correct. You get all the IR benefits um, that you would have had with Kinect uh, simply through this blaster, uh, which is kind of nice. And so having that integrated, this this box will be uh, starting at two ninety nine. So really a great value for people that you know we think there's still tens of millions of people that haven't bought an Xbox One that are still on Xbox three sixty. So that's kind of the primary audience we're looking for this. But we know our fans will want to upgrade, may want to get the smaller, newer model, um, and so there's great great benefits for them as well. Gotcha. And so I'm someone who uses, actually, uh, Xbox voice commands a lot. And obviously, with the introduction of Cortana, uh, that's going to get even more robust and even more uh, naturalistic, I think. Yes. Uh, if you're someone who buys an Xbox One S, uh, do you have a way to talk to Cortana out of the box? You can with the headset. So Cortana will work with the headset. 
Uh, if you own an Xbox One today and have a Kinect, we are uh, giving those customers a free adapter and no charge to them, so they can plug it right in here in the back. Gotcha. Yeah, so that's one other big change is the Kinect port is gone. There's a USB 3.0 port, right, that is labeled for Kinect, I believe. Uh, well, and there's two, there's two USBs in the back. We still have HDMI in and HDMI out. Gotcha. So for people that want TV integration, we have that there. Uh, yeah, the two USBs, we have an IR for IR blasting, the optical audio, and Ethernet. <clears throat> You're right. We lost the Connect port uh, as part of the size reduction, but still does support Connect with the free adapter. Cool. And uh, lastly, let's talk about this new controller. Now, I think at a glance, someone might mistake this as being the same controller, but there's a lot of uh, simplifications in the design. Uh, I've been told that the, the back is uh, almost like the rubberized grip in the Lunar White controller, you've got sort of this laser etched uh, gripping in the back. Is that correct? That is correct. So we know, you know, our fans love the controller. A lot of great feedback on Xbox One. A lot of people believe, you know, we have the top controller in the industry. So we didn't want to change what people love, but we wanted to refine and improve. So you're right. We added first, we added Bluetooth. So you can go have full compatibility from your Xbox One to your PC as we're doing that with the um, Xbox Play Anywhere program, allowing you to play your games across Xbox and Windows 10. We want you to be able to do the same with your controller. And then you're right, there's more texturized grips, uh, which is one of the biggest improvements in addition to a few subtle design improvements as well. And then this controller is the same controller that we're offering as part of the Xbox Design Lab. So you can actually go create your own custom controller, change the colors on the buttons, the triggers, the bumpers, the D-pad, you name it. Put your favorite school or game or whatever colors you want to make it. You can even laser at your, your own gamer tag or whatever you want to put on the controller, really make it yours. That's awesome. Um, cool. And so lastly, I think uh, one question a lot of people watching this might have, if they're existing Xbox One owners, is uh, let's say you're an individual who has an Xbox One already, and you're happy with it, it runs fine, you can play games on it. Uh, HDR, I think, is a, a video benefit, right? That's not in games, or is it? It will provide games benefits. So. With high dynamic range, you do get um, better contrast with blacks and whites. Uh, we've seen it, um, for example, in Gears. I've been uh, playing uh, with HDR on and off on Gears 4, and when I like look at the moon and things like that, you do really notice difference in lighting and color. Uh, we know it's commonly people, most people go, hey, I use HDR on my camera. What does that mean for gaming? Uh, but it will provide um, some nice benefits for gamers that have 4K TVs that support HDR, and so we are doing that with Gears. We're doing it with Forza. Uh, we're doing it with Scale. Bound, number of titles will be supporting uh, HDR, which is another great, great benefit. Cool. So that's that's on a per game basis. Then it's not a retroactive thing. It's something that the developer needs to integrate themselves, right? That is correct. So the box is HDR capable. Uh, we've talked about uh, a number of titles we're doing on the first party side. Uh, imagine third party partners will talk about which of their games support HDR. Uh, and so we know a lot of people are buying 4K TVs. They want to be able to get 4K video, 4K Blu-rays, and be able to get HDR games as part of that. We feel like it's a great value. Cool. Uh, so I'm somebody who still has a 1080p TV. I'm one of those Luddites. Uh, would I get some of those same benefits if I were to get an Xbox One S? Well, what you'll get is um, you'll get a smaller box, but the most of the 4K streaming, the 4K Blu-ray and all that, right. will basically think of it as like this is HDR, sorry, this is uh, 4K ready for you. So when you do get your 4K TV, you'll be able to get those benefits. Um, but today, this is designed to play Xbox One games and look great on your 1080p TV. Um, so you'll get those benefits as well. Awesome, and, and briefly, I wanna to touch on the uh, Project Scorpio announcement. Um, I, I'd like to sort of pose a similar question because I'm not necessarily planning to upgrade to 4K in the next 12 to 18 months. Maybe that'll change. Uh, if I get an Xbox One Scorpio, uh, will I see any benefits as a 1080p television owner? Yeah, so the Project Scorpio for us was about how could we actually then go from where we are today with this box to take another big leap forward? And so we knew the next big step is to actually deliver true 4K gaming. We know that requires a significant more processing power. That's why we've talked about Scorpio will have six teraflops of uh, GPU power. And also, as part of that, we'll be able to not only do true 4K games, but also high fidelity VR. A lot of those things today, People that have like super high-end PCs are getting some benefits to that, um, but how can we bring that to the living room with consoles is the, um, is the idea. It will have significantly more power, so if you're on a 1080p TV, you will see the power and performance benefits, but to get true 4K uh, games, you'll obviously want to have a 4K TV as well. Gotcha, it makes a lot of sense. So one of my favorite things uh, that any game has done 
was in the past year in, from like a hardware and resolution perspective is Halo 5 Guardians. Obviously, they made the decision to run that game at 60 FPS locked and just have the resolution dynamically scale when things were getting too busy. Um, and as somebody who cares a lot about frame rate, I love that decision because it means that I just get this seamless, smooth experience. Is that something that uh, Microsoft is thinking about carrying forward into other first party games? And uh, is that something that uh, these new boxes will affect? Like if I'm playing Halo 5, on a Scorpio, uh, will it stay at 1080p for for more situations? Yeah, so we haven't gotten to the specifics of like what games will do, but obviously, if there is scalable, um, you know, graphics performance, you know, with a more powerful box, there w there will potentially be benefits there. It's all title by title, um, but the key thing is is that we will support true 4K games, whether games existing games are already designed to be able to do that or not. We're going to obviously to go off with our development partners uh, and work on a lineup that will take full advantage of the box. Um, I think the I agree. I think the decision the team at 343 did around locking the frame rate and allowing the resolution to scale um, was you know we got a lot of great feedback on that. Um, I think a lot of developers are hearing that um, and so uh, and you're right as we get more power and performance uh, you get more benefits out of those games too well, well Aaron thank you so much for your time and thank you for this look at the Xbox One S uh, for more from Polygon at E3 we've got videos going up all week long on youtube.com slash polygon or polygon.com proper so yeah thanks for watching <laughs>